Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. The book of Revelation describes the time prayed for, hoped for, known in Old Testament times as the day of the Lord, when God would make all things new, would make all the wrongs right, would make all the things that were unfair, fair, unjust, just, would set everything straight. As it says in Isaiah, every mountain shall be laid low and every valley shall be lifted up. Everything shall be evened out. The people of the New, of New Testament times, the church of New Testament times, had known that message since they were children because they knew it from the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah is sort of comparable to the book of Revelation when in, in terms of describing this new day, this day of the Lord that is coming when everything will be set right, when every tear will be wiped from every eye. There's a famous passage in Isaiah where it says, Isaiah chapter 25, where it says that on this mountain the Lord will remove the sheet, the covering, the shroud that separates. He will destroy death forever. But I want to read you a short passage from Isaiah chapter 49, this description of this day when all will be made right. Sing for joy, it says in Isaiah 49. Sing for joy, O heavens, and exalt, O earth. Break forth, O mountains, into singing, for the Lord has comforted His people and will have compassion on His afflicted. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child? That she should have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget. Yet I will not forget you. Behold, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. Even these may forget, yet I will not forget you. The central task of the early Christian community, the first thing that they gathered together to do was to remember. For 2,000 years, we've been having the same service of remembrance over and over and over again. We, you've done it hundreds, some of us maybe thousands of times when we remember that Jesus said, do this to remember me. We reenact, we resurrect, we bring back that moment when Jesus sat with his friends and broke bread and said, this is my body. This is what it's like. This is the life that you will live. Do this every time you eat it, every time you drink it, every time you think of it. Do this to remember me. The original Christian community was a community of remembrance, and it started with remembering Jesus, with remembering the events of his life, and especially the events of the end of his life where he broke the bread and turned himself over and was crucified, died, and was buried. And after three days was raised again. Remembering this was the beginning, the essential task of the Christian community. But so many of these communities, so many of these communities met in secret, in hidden places, in, in far away removes. You know, we talk today with the churches struggled, you know, for many decades about how to remain relevant, about how to remain visible, about how to let people see us. You know, we want to put out the, the biggest sign or we want to have the best advertising or we want to be in the most visible location. Well, at the beginning, that's not what they wanted at all. The church desperately tried to fly under the radar of those who would hurt it, of those who would attack it. 
They invited, they said, come and see. But they hid, too. They hid in the basement. They hid in the catacombs. They hid in the graveyard, in the cemetery, in the places that were overlooked, that were not remembered, that were forgotten. They hid among those who had gone before them. They were surrounded by the bones of those who had gone before before them. And so they remembered Jesus every single time. But they also remembered, they couldn't help but remember, they had no choice but to remember those who had gone before. Those who had been martyred. Those who, as it says in the letter to the Hebrews, those who died in faith without having received the promises. They remembered and they remembered And they remembered. The letter to the Hebrews lists at great length. It's at the end, the author says, I have no more time to list. Words would fail me. I wouldn't have enough pages if I tried to list all those who have died in the faith, all those examples who have gone before us. But here they all are. So then, the author says, so then, you remember. Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, since we are surrounded by the bones, the memories, the lives of those who have gone before us, then let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Diligently apply ourselves to the task that is set before us. Throw throw ourselves completely and wholly into living the life that is given us to live because we remember we are a community that remembers we are surrounded by not just those who are here today in the church with us but all those who have come before us we are witnessing not just for ourselves not just for this church not even just for the church around the world but we are witnessing for the long tradition the long line of all those who have witnessed before us. The Christian community, at its beginning, through the centuries even to today, the Christian community is a community that remembers. But I said that the community was hidden in the basement, it was hidden in the catacombs, it was hidden in the graveyard, it was hidden away in these places. It was hidden from a culture. It was breaking into the underbelly of a culture that also remembered. But what did that culture remember? What do human cultures tend to remember? What do our societies, when they're, when they're really uh, uh, you know, flowing, when they're really doing, you know, when they're really succeeding and building and, and raising up to the heavens, what do we remember? We remember our greatness. We remember our power. We remember our great men, sometimes our great women even throughout history. We remember those that are up on the pedestals or those that have the power to build the monuments or those who have the temples dedicated to them or those whose shoulders we know we stand on. That's not necessarily a bad thing. In the early Christian times, it sometimes was a bad thing. One of the reasons that the Christian community was persecuted, you know this, right, was because they claimed that this man, this carpenter from Nazareth who had walked among them, was the Son of God, and they lived in a culture where there was only one Son of God, and it was the emperor, the leader, the ruler, the one who had plenty of statues and plenty of temples and plenty of monuments built to him, who would be remembered for all of his life. Human culture is very good at remembering what we want to remember. Very good at remembering what is built, you know, the monuments that are built to our power, to our prestige, to our success. Human culture has always been good at remembering that, and even to this day. Sometimes with bitterness and anger and conflict, we fight over what we're going to remember or how we're going to remember it. Because sometimes we want to remember only the good, only the power, only 
the things that make us happy or that, or that we think are worthy of being remembered. The Christian community for 2,000 years, from that day to this, has been the community who remembers everybody. Who remembers every life. Who remembers every, every flowing of the Spirit, manifestation of the children of God. Who remembers that the kingdom is breaking into the world. Not in big obvious ways all the time but in every little subtle overlooked way. Now there is no one here today who remembers even every person that has ever given glory to God or witnessed to the kingdom here in this congregation. There is no one here today who remembers every single one of those people. Most of us, really, I would imagine, even those of us who have been here for a long time, only remember a small fraction of those people. And this is just one church. This is just one manifestation of the community of faith. There's no one who remembers everyone. But our Christian calling always is to remember that every single one of us who professes to believe, who gathers to witness, who goes out to serve, is a manifestation of God's power and God's work in the world. No one remembers everyone, but everyone is remembered in the community, around the world, in the kingdom of God. We are people, like Pastor Dave said earlier, we are people who remember. After the TV cameras have been shut off, when there aren't statues or monuments built, We are people who are called and who really truly live out the calling to remember. You know, Henry Nouwen once wrote that he strove to live his life so that those who had gone before him could be remembered through him. That their spirit and their faith shined through his every day, his every decision, his every moment. We are people who are called to live like that. We're not always good at it. You know, there are times, I think of those who have gone before me, there are times when things that, that, ways that they were that that, uh, um, I wouldn't like to be like, shined, you know, clearly through me. But we are called every day to live our lives so that the spirit and the faith and the love that we have known shine through us. Like I said to the kids, those who are here, those who are around us, can, if we choose to let them, shine through us. You know that those who have gone before us shine through us too. And we witness also for those who will come after us. We build the foundations of the faith of those who are growing, of those who are are beginning, of those who are not even here yet. This is what the Christian community does. We remember today those who have gone before us, but we remember every day that the kingdom of God is coming in and indeed is already here through us, through the people who have founded our faith, and through those whose faith we are helping to found. May that guide your days, your decisions, your priorities, your lives, this week and in all the days to come. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.